Well, it seems to me that compared to the situation in Scotland, there is a, a constitutional dispute here that is very difficult to resolve. The Scottish um, Parliament intends to hold a referendum on independence and the UK government is agreeable in principle to that happening. There are some negotiations still to be done on the process, but there is an agreement across the UK that Scotland should be allowed to have a referendum on independence. That's clearly not the case here. Um, and what has sparked this, I would say, is uh, largely, I mean, I'm not a close analysis, uh, analyzer of the Catalan situation, but the involvement of the Constitutional Court. And uh, so far our courts have not been involved in, in deliberating on, on whether a referendum could be held or not, or on the legality of our statute, the Scotland Act. So uh, it's a very different scenario and the main problem, uh, as, you, as you well know, is, is trying to reach agreement with the central Spanish state about the legitimacy of a referendum. Well, Catalonia seems to be on its way to independence. The situation obviously is people wanting to make important changes in the uh, uh, status of, of Catalonia and wanting to become an independent uh, nation and what I understand is that uh, you have to find a means to make it happen, uh, hold a referendum or hold another form of consultation of the people and the challenge is to make that happen because you know that the Spanish uh, state might want to prevent that from happening. But don't forget, you have the right of self-determination, you should decide on your own future and you should make sure the Spanish government and the world knows that you want to decide your own future and it's, it's your decision and no one else's decision. Well, it's difficult to offer too much advice. I mean, one issue is to try and play the constitutional uh, system as much as you can, use the constitutional system, try and remain within it, present uh, the case to hold a referendum and argue that there is a constitutional right to do this, that there is a democratic right to do this. Um, another issue is obviously to mobilise public support or to, to mobilise the people, to deliberate with the people and find out exactly what constitutional future they want if a, a referendum is a popular option. It seems that from the big demonstration that took place quite recently, there is widespread support and a, a demand, if you like, to, to allow the people to speak. Uh, I don't know what the process would be to try and hold an unofficial referendum. I mean, that's taking you possibly uh, outside the constitutional framework and, and that's new territory to me and as a lawyer coming from the United Kingdom, that's not an avenue that any uh, nationalist group that has, has considered going down in any serious way. So it is uncharted territory and uh, it's, it's something that Catalans would have to decide for themselves. Well, I think the better advice to give you is, in, in looking at the experience of Quebec, is using this incredible moment where the people support, obviously, this drive towards independence and uh, consulting the people as quickly as possible and uh, preparing for independence, uh, making sure you uh, make known what independence would mean on all kinds of issues, cultural, economic, social issues, what uh, your priorities would be when it comes to the European Union, the United Nations. You have to attract already now support from other peoples and other parliaments. And you, you have to do it your own way. You have to do it your own way. Look at experiences of other countries. But again and always, you have to make known that you will make the decision. And it's democracy that has to prevail. Uh, and that no one can prevent you from becoming a country if that is the will of the people of Catalonia.